My name is Howard Liu. I'm a child psychiatrist, and I'm also the director of the Behavioral Health Education Center in Nebraska, both based at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And mostly I work with both uh, children and adults. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor. Uh, our degree is an MD or a DO, and we specialize in mental health, but also addictions. And I would say of the behavioral health professions, we are qualified to treat both the mental and the physical aspects of all these disorders. Uh, most of us work in a variety of settings. Uh, it could be outpatient, where you're seeing folks walking in from office settings, uh, inpatient, which is more serious, uh, if you have a crisis in mental health, uh, and anywhere in between hospitals, uh, we often work in settings that are very underserved, like uh, prisons and correctional settings, and often in the community as well. Uh, some of us specialize in special settings like working in a veterans hospital with the military, uh, hospice for end-of-life care, and, and other choices. Uh, the bottom line is that there's a, a very, real huge shortage of psychiatrists across the country. There might be 45,000 in the U.S., but most of them are approaching retirement age at a pretty quick rate, so we want to really recruit the next generation. So the three things you probably need as a psychiatrist are uh, good communication skills, uh, critical thinking skills, and a sense of empathy, particularly for underserved or suffering patients. Uh, communication is the first part, and that's really important because a lot of what you gather is not going to be through ordering tests, but really talking to people, and you have to build that relationship. So I would say that psychiatrists are generally thought of as probably the most skilled interviewers in the practice of medicine. Uh, critical thinking is also really important because after you talk to somebody, you have to figure out what's really going on. And it's complicated because there's a mix of social factors, uh, biological factors about their family history, and also things that might contribute like other medications they're on and other physical illnesses. So you've got to tease those things out and choose the right treatment for your patient. And finally, I, I want to say that empathy is, is really so important in the practice of psychiatry because a lot of our patients are those that are underserved. They you know, often are suffering. Sometimes they have uh, real access problems. And you have to really care about them and figure out how do you help them, how do you connect them to the right level of care so that they really get better. So to become a psychiatrist after high school, it takes you about 12 years, which sounds daunting. But it really goes quickly, because they bundle it into three parts, really college, and then medical school, and then residency. And the things to remember are, you know, this, the common things. You've got to really do well at school. Your GPA is important. But you also have to prepare for the MCAT, which is one of the big uh, national standardized entrance exams. And finally, you want to focus on some of those extracurricular things that will enhance your application. It includes volunteer work, uh, clinical shadowing, do as much of that as you can. And certainly, if you can do some research, that's a bonus, uh, but it's not required. You know, I decided to become a psychiatrist sort of by accident. And actually, it was in my third year of medical school, in my very last rotation, which is the year when you decide your specialty. I was assigned to the Veterans Hospital, the VA hospital, and a substance use outpatient clinic. And I was working with veterans in these uh, groups. And actually, my resident, uh, who I reported to as a med student, was out uh, with an injury. So I got to run the groups and really spend some time uh, with these vets. And as I heard their stories about serving overseas in Vietnam, about being in special forces in Panama, you know, I really understood just what this degree of sacrifice was. And I understood, too, that every person had a story to tell and that using some of the techniques of therapy and some of the medications, that I really could help them and really make a difference. So that was what really what inspired me to go into the field. You know, as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, I'm also adult trained. So I get to see both uh, kids as young as five years old, four years old, and adults, you know. And I really enjoy seeing both groups because you get to follow people over time and kind of see how they turn out. And the nice thing is that, you know, especially growing up and, and spending my own life and having my own kids, uh, you really get to see that people change. And they go through crises and they evolve and get past things like their early uh, ADHD they might have had in high school. Um, and you get to see also, though, that sometimes things come back, like depression. So you have to follow things and really have a good relationship. And you have to be able to talk with them very honestly 
about struggles that they're having. So it's important because you have a blend of the science and this relationship that really carries you through. And one of my favorite quotes is from actually a Scottish psychiatrist, Artie Lang, uh, who said that psychiatrist really be must become a fellow traveler with his patient. And I think that's really true. You know, the broader your own experience in life, the more you can connect with your patients and consumers. And I think that really helps both of you along the journey.